Hey, everybody. Welcome to this Twilight Friday edition of Thoroughbred Action. Jason Blewett joining you from our clubhouse studios. The holiday weekend in full swing. We ran nine on a perfect weather Friday at Gulfstream Park, and we will get much more right now as we send it on up to track announcer Pete Aiello. Nine races on a July 5th Friday in South Florida with a fast main track and a firm turf course, a carryover in the Super High Five and the Rainbow Six, the first of the day over the main track at one mile. Claimer is in for a price tag of 12,500, a field of six, favorite was the five, courage and honor. Racing at Gulfstream. Level beginning, the outside duo away quickly. Spa Jazz out for the early lead with Courage and Honor up on the inside of him. These two work three lengths ahead of Big Boy Bruno, who's out of their third. Back to fourth is King Wildcat, then Sky Point, and the trailer is Prince Tito. Out of the chute and onto the main course and crossing over Ska, Spa Jazz to lead three parts of a length. Armiel wants to be outside of that rival, so he moves Courage and Honor into the two path to race on second. And Vasquez has Big Boy Bruno in stride from third behind a 24 second opening quarter. These top three have gone five ahead of King Wildcat, then at the back are Sky Point and Prince Tito. Less than five eighths to run. Spa Jazz the leader. Courage and Honor with constant pace pressure in second. Back to third is Big Boy Bruno, four clear of King Wildcat. Then it's back to Sky Point, and Prince Tito is last. 47 seconds for the opening half mile. Into the far turn they race. Spa Jazz in front by neck. On the outside, Courage and Honor launching his bid from second. Angling three wide, Big Boy Bruno scrubbed on to gain on the top two from third. King Wildcat driven by Double J. He's starting to make a bit of ground while fourth as Spa Jazz holds a narrow lead. Spa Jazz to the top of the stretch, only ahead on top. Courage and Honor bid up on the outside second. Here's King Wildcat with a rail run, going to try to spring an upset. Far outside him, Big Boy Bruno, 360 to go. Spa Jazz in front. Courage and Honor King Wildcat down at the inside and Big Boy Bruno lifting on the stand side. 16th to go. Four across the course here. Big Boy Bruno widest of all. Courage and Honor and Spa Jazz right alongside. Here's the line. Photo finish. Photo in the opener. Probably Big Boy Bruno out wide, but it's tight in 136 and 3. Going into today's first race, you had to ask yourself who had the best trip in the race, and if you thought there was the three, Big Boy Bruno, you had a 5-2 to two success as he got up in the last jump. A big sustained run from this son of Seeking Beauty for Peter Walder and Miguel Vasquez, and owners Walder Racing and Wellaby Stable. We go to the second race and kick off the early pick four, a mile and a 16th on turf. Claimers of the Philly and Mare Verratti in for $10,000. Scratch the five total treasure, eight to the gate. The favorite was the four early time. From the rail, Karenina shows first. Early time has speed. Starship Gussie moves up with Mambo Dancer. Mambo Dancer, a neck on top. Away fourth is early time. Down inside goes Rapid Transit from fifth. Out wide is Infinity Sky. The two at the back are me, Carlita, and Kindhearted Coda. In the charge around the first turn, Mambo Dancer drops over to the rail and leads the way, but Starship Gussie with pace pressure on the outside. Corrent in the third toward the rail. Fourth is the favorite early time. Out three wide fifth goes Infinity Sky. Now Rapid Transit slides through on the inside, and the Sato duo at the back, Me Carlita and Kindhearted Coda. To the backstretch they race. Mambo Dancer defers to Starship Gussie, who now leads by a length. Karenin is going to take a shot in the two-path second. Mambo Dancer now in third. In the two-path fourth is early time. Getting a good run of it under Tyler G. A length better than a rail running rapid transit. Outside of her in Infinity Sky. Then the two at the back remain Kindhearted Coda and me Carlita. Inside half a mile away as they swing to the far turn, Jeffrey Sanchez and Starship Gussie with a rail advantage and a half a length advantage on the outside second horse. Karenina from third early time alongside Mumbo Dancer. Rapid Transit looking to angle out and maybe follow early time. Three wide is Infinity Sky, then meet Carlita. And at the back of the field is Kindhearted Coda. Karenina is up for the lead. Early time is on the attack. Rapid Transit is loose now, four wide toward the inside and Starship Gussie trying to fight on. Less than a quarter of a mile to go. Rapid Transit out in the center, now charging hard under high row. From between horses, Karenina down at the inside, Starship Gussie. Rapid Transit's put her best foot forward and she takes the lead. Up on the outside, here's me, Carlita, for a late slice. Rapid Transit will win it. Starship Gussie battles back for second ahead of me, Carlita, third. Karenina ran fourth, early time flat in 145 and three. Number four, early time, a no excuse effort here this afternoon. She fails to light the board. The win goes to number three, Rapid Transit, as this daughter of Bullet Train. 
makes it two for two in her young racing career for owners Ken and Sarah Ramsey, trainer Mike Maker, Hyro Rendon on board for the winning ride. Number nine, Starship Gussie was second ahead of the two, Mi Carlita, who rattled home for third. Time for a commercial break. A lot of action to come. Don't go away. The best chance for success begins with a solid foundation. At Hardacre Farm, early personal one-on-one -on -one care starts the journey to becoming a champion. Bred to leading stallions, our mares represent the highest standards. Hardacre Farm's signature in the breeding industry. Based in Ocala, Florida, breeder and owner Amy Tarrant has inspired excellence throughout her entire career. In your quest for success, start with Hardacre Farm. Breeding the champions of tomorrow. Back now for race number three on the afternoon. One mile over the main track, allowance optional claiming horses and for a price tag of $40,000, a field of six. This was a wide open betting race. And they're off. Hopping in the air at the break was So Long Chuck. It was a good start for Acor from down toward the inside from the far outside Red Crescent in between horses Bondetti. Also into the top flight goes front loaded. They line up four across the course, now three across the course as they exit the chute. The two at the back are So Long Chuck and Eye of a Jedi. They complete the opening quarter mile, and Acor has rail position and a narrow lead. Bondetti pressing the issue second, four wide Red Crescent, three wide front loaded. From behind the speed fifth is So Long Chuck, and I have a Jedi last of the six under Jeffrey Sanchez as the opening quarter was 23 and four. Less than five eighths to go, they keep the pressure on up front. From between horses, Bondetti along the rail, it's Acor, three wide and front loaded. Good trip for Red Crescent. Camacho guides him to the inside to draft along for a bit. Down inside goes So Long Chuck and I have a Jedi going to try to rally from the back. Opening half mile very quick, 45 and four as they round the far turn. Front loaded three wide. Red Crescent really catching the eye from fourth. He's traveling awfully nicely and now trying to run home from the back is I have a Jedi. So long Chuck got hemmed in traffic as they're at the top of the stretch with a quarter of a mile left to get. It's front loaded who comes away with the lead, but Red Crescent's loose now. And here comes Red Crescent after three quarters and 109 and four. Red Crescent takes the lead. Front loaded right back out him from second. I have a Jedi down the stand side. Then it's so long, Chuck. Final eighth of a mile. Red Crest, and he just traveled too well into the race not to be effective, and effective he is. He's nine to two, and he's long gone. Red Crescent is in front. Second front loaded. Third is I have a Jedi, and fourth is so long, Chuck. Tons of speed signed on in the third race today. Sitting off the speed and rallying for an easy win in the end was number six, Red Crescent, under jockey Semi Camacho for trainer John Vincent and the Equine Authority. Five front loaded with second ahead of the two eye of a Jedi, ran third. Let's go to the fourth race on turf at seven and a half furlongs, made in claimers from the $20,000 variety. Scratch the two red hood, favorite was the six, spanned. Remigate. And they're off. Very quick start at the rail for reorganizers headed off for the early lead. Up on the outside, Spand and Frank alone and splitting horses is Analyze Your Vision. Four across the course here as they head into the first turn. Saving ground is Golden Line of with good timing man in the two path and Taranto three wide. The early trailer is the exception. Around the first turn they go, Edgar Prado and the son of Datalink reorganize on top by two and a half. Analyze your vision is second, Span is parked at the rail third. Three wide fourth is Frank alone, two and a half clear of Taranto. Then comes Golden Line of ahead of Good Timing Man. And the exception is last, while a bit wide on the course, the opening quarter was 23 seconds flat. Down the back stretch they go. Nothing's changed up front. Reorganize has the lead. His lead, however, is now down to a half a length as Zayas moves Spanned into contention. And here's Spanned to take on the leader. Reorganize. Back to third. Analyze your vision. On from fourth. That's Taranto ahead of Frank Alone, who's backpedaling fifth. Up to sixth is the exception around good timing man and golden line of his last. 46 and two for the opening half mile. Spanned with his ears up is up to take the lead. Reorganizes now all in from second. Taranto is third. The rest are far, far back, led by good timing man and golden line of. Quarter of a mile left to get. Spanned the boss. Spanned off the turn now to a four length lead. Taranto is up into second. Reorganizes is going to try to salvage third, but that's all he can salvage as Spanned has kicked it away. Spanned for Ken and Sarah Ramsey and Mike Maker. Run up the score under Edgar. Zayas spanned is a much the best winner. Six or seven clear. Taranto second. Good timing man gets third. Reorganized. Finish fourth in 129 and one.
the second start off the long layoff and a major class drop. Two winning medicines for number six, Spand, who won easy under jockey Edgar Zayas. Mike Maker, the winning trainer for Ken and Sarah Ramsey. That's their second win today. Number eight, Taranto, second ahead of the four. Good timing man, ran third. We go to the fifth race now, a one-mile starter allowance race. A price tag attached here was $10,000. Scratch the one, Dizzy Gillespie. The favorite was the seven, Rock U. And they're off. Poor start for Unbridled Piper. Quick start for Charlie the Greek, who's heading off for the early lead. Love Tree showing some tactical foot far outside Rock U. Away in fourth is the gray Mr. Chaplin, then Unbridled Piper, and Kinani at the inside. Out of the shoot and on to the main course. Love Tree is going to put a neck on top. Must not be much pace on for that to occur. As right back at him is Charlie the Greek from second. Spotted three wide third is Rock U. Away in fourth is Mr. Chaplin. Then it's Unbridled Piper. And Kinani is last. Opening quarter controlled indeed. 24 seconds flat as they head five furlongs from home. Charlie the Greek at the rail. In between horses, it's Love Tree. They're shoulder to shoulder. And with the favorite Rock U perched off the speed third, Isaias kicks on a bit with Charlie the Greek. He now leads a half a length. From fourth, it's Mr. Chaplin. From fifth, it's Unbridled Piper. And Keenani is last. 46 and four for the opening half mile. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Charlie the Greek still in front by a neck. Up alongside again is Love Tree from second. Rios working overtime on Rock U. He's three wide third. Mr. Chaplin's a big number and driven from fourth. Then Keenani and Unbridled Piper as they run to the top of the stretch. Now it's Zayas' turn to get to work as Charlie the Greek fights to hold it. Gaff Leone and Love Tree issue the challenge on the outside. And now after three quarters and one ten and two, it's Love Tree who puts a neck on top. Charlie the Greek is fighting back toward the outside and Rock U. These three with an eighth of a mile left. Love Tree has the lead. Charlie the Greek, all heart toward the rail. Love Tree, Charlie's back for more. Charlie the Greek inside. Charlie the Greek wins. How's that for pinning your ears and coming back? Charlie the Greek back up to win it in 135 and three. Turning for home, Charlie the Greek looked destined for a minor award, but you have to know this son of Adios, Charlie likes a fight, and he has a grinder-type running style, so you figured he'd have something in reserve. He did indeed, and turned away all challenges under a, a very strong ride from our leading rider during the spring season, Edgar Zayas, for Double L Racing, Joe Katniss, the third. Time for a commercial break. The late pick four is right after this. And the Princess Rudy with a quarter mile left to go. Four off the top of the turn. Brace for the Kathleen O'Connell Barn in front by five with just an eighth of a mile to go. And she's turning in this into a runaway. The powerhouse performance. She punches her ticket to the Breeders' Cup and wins by five. Back now for race number six on the program. Start of the late pick four. Two-year-olds at five furlongs over the main track. They're in for $16,000. Scratch the four, five, and six. Heavily favored, number one. Let's rumble. And uh, they're off. Good start for the big favorite, Let's Rumble, who fires off to a clear advantage from Stroll by Lee away in second. Then it's already five or six to St. Joe Viper and Bambino. And 5th of November is last, and Let's Rumble doing just that. Let's Rumble on the major class drop is the big favorite and is open to seven length lead now. Stroll by Lee is there, second. St. Joe Viper is third. Then it's 5th of November. And Beam Bambino's in the cheap seats here through the opening quarter in 22 and 1. Let's Rumble trying to save some for the stretch drive, but is open to 10 length lead. Stroll by Lee is second, trying to re rally on this big favorite. The rest are just too far back, and they're at the top of the stretch. Zayas asks the son of Hear No Evil to finish what he started, and Let's Rumble says, Edgar, I'm way ahead of you. In fact, he's way ahead of everybody, as Let's Rumble came to Rumble, and he's long gone. Let's Rumble never threatened, actually never seen. He won by six in the end. Stroll by Lee second, Bambino third. 
Number one, Let's Rumble rolls in jo under Jockey Edgar Zayas, giving him his third of the day. Ralph Nix trains the son of Hear No Evil for the Jacks Are Better Farm. The big class drop proved far too much for the rest of the field. Number two, Stroll by Lee is turning into a pretty consistent check getter. Two seconds in a row for him out of the seven Bambino who ran third. Up next, the seventh race, the start of the late pick three on turf at about seven and a half furlongs. A field of 10 signed on. Favorites included the four, Just Call Me Norman, and the seven, Big Agenda. And they're off. From the center, that's Shiny Copper Penny and Big Agenda away quickly, but there goes Chief White Sox, keyed up. And Chief White Sox will cross and clear and lead Shiny Copper Penny by almost two. Third is Big Agenda, fourth at the inside is Farley, followed fifth by Lil Commissioner. In between horses is Just Call Me Norman, Buddy's Run is on his outside. Tapping on the brakes while in tight has unlocked the potential. Out wide on the course is crowned to the gold and the trailer. Please sit down. Around the first turn they go. With the advantage, it's Chief White Sox by length. In the two-path, Shiny Copper Penny keeps the pressure on second. Farley pockets up third, fourth and outside, and big agenda. Back to fifth and low commissioner, a neck better than Buddy's run. Two and a half clear of Just Call Me Norman. Then crowned to the gold and unlocked the potential. And still last is Please Sit Down. 24 and 1 for the opening quarter speed. They race to the half mile point. Two long shots hooking up on the top end. Shiny Copper Penny to the outside of Chief White Sox up front. Big Agenda looms large while three wide third. Farley sequestered at the rail, fourth, no place to go. From fifth and running home, low commissioner ahead of Buddy's run. Just call me Norman starts to warm to the task. He'll need to find some place to go as they race to the top of the stretch. It's Chief White Sox with Big Agenda on the outside. Low commissioner, three wide. Farley gonna get out and go after the top horses they're at the top of the stretch with the advantage it's big agenda by a length and a half farley tries to get to him second well clear of the others on the inside it's big agenda to the outside and farley farley tries to get by big agenda big agenda farley surging big agenda farley farley surging farley is in time took him every step of the stretch run but farley got up to nail big agenda in 129 and three Really tight finish in today's seventh race. After looking at the photo, I probably shouldn't have called it, but the important thing was I called it right as number five, Farley, got up in the final jump to beat the favorite big agenda under jockey Luca Panici for Antonio Sato for the secure investments. Seven big agenda with a great try second ahead of the four, Just Call Me Norman, who ran third. Time for our final commercial break. The late Daily Double is right after this. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. Back now for race number eight on the program. First half of the late daily double. Made in claimers of the $10,000 level. They travel five furlongs. Scratch number one, Malakai Knight, a field of eight. The favorite was number two, Drill Down Dew. And they're off. Good start at the inside for Drill Down Dude from between horses. Here's South Pass moving up, and South Pass is going to take the lead. Starship Taxi from out wide moves to take second, racing ahead of the favorite Drill Down Dude, who's at the rail third. Back to fourth in Tom's Choo Choo, then Jem Wan. Buffon is off the speed, about five lengths off the pace, then Noble King, and newcomer Determined Boy is last of all as they fly around the far turn. Less than three-eighths to go, and with the advantage, it's South Pass by neck. Starship Taxi turning up the pressure second. Haramio looking to angle to the outside with drill down dude gem one is four wide and trying to keep him in and it's a gap of two and a half to tom's choo choo with a quarter of a mile left to get south pass trying to spring the shocker turns for home with the lead starship taxi moving up on the outside to try to get by second back to third and drill down dude final eighth of a mile drill down dude tries to get these top two but south pass has a kick south pass has the lead he's 50 to one south pass in a shocker Second, Drill Down Dude. Third, Starship Taxi. Then, Tom Chuchu. How about a 50 to 1 shocker to spice up your life? Second time starter three, South Pass. Breaks with the field today, establishes the lead, and turns away all challenges under jockey Jeffrey Sanchez for trainer Oscar Gonzalez. Yes, that Oscar Gonzalez paid over $100 for the Just for Fun stable. 
Second number two, drill down dude ahead of the seven starship taxi, ran third. We go to the ninth and final race now, the final race of the day on turf at one mile. Maiden Claimer is in for $10,000. Scratch the nine, 13, and 14. 11 went postward. The favorite was the number three, Peace Speaker. And runners away. Check to last was Stay Again. Also a beat slow was the newcomer Can't Trump Kitten. It was a good start for the favorite Peace Speaker who's put into play early and leads the field while dropped over to the rail. Barbie's King is just behind him. Up into second is Art Bijou. Out wide on the course are both Leave It to Key and Judge Hudson. Judge Hudson took the worst of it. He's four wide. Perfect enough, meanwhile, save ground to race three ahead of restart. Then comes It's an Experience. It's a gap of another three lengths back to the back markers. They are Can't Trump Kitten and it's an experience just ahead of him is stay again to the back stretch they race and up front it's peace speaker the big favorite looming large early he leads by three over barbie's king the nearest pursuer second Art Bijou is now racing from third, out wide, Judge Hudson fourth. El Commendatore is down inside. Then it's just, uh, perfect enough in between runners. A length and a half then to leave it to Key, who's beginning to backpedal as restart gets underway. Racing ahead of Stay Again, and it's an experience. Can't Trump Kitten is last of all through a 47-second half mile. Into the far turn they go. Peace Speaker trying to throw the knockout punch. He goes around the turn on top by four. Barbie's King is now fully extended second. Perfect enough is third. Restart splits horses and takes over fourth, but he's better than 10 lengths off the lead as Peace Speaker is sharp. Peace Speaker through three quarters in 111 and two. He's off the turn and a stretch drive with a five length lead. Barbie's King is second down the outside. Perfect enough trying to take up some slack. Here's Kent Trump Kitten from dead last. He's figuring it out late in the game. He might be too late though as Peace Speaker is still well clear. Peace Speaker and Hyro Rendon heat to wire winners. They won by four. Perfect enough second, can't drop kitten third, then Barbie's king, and restart. Returning from an extended vacation and plunging in class, Peace Speaker humbles the competition in the Friday finale, going gate to wire while never threatened under Hyro Rendon for Flying Pheasant Farm and trainer Mary Epler. It was a good run from 11, perfect enough, a good run from the two Barbie's king, but they had to settle for minor awards as can't drop kitten rolled home for a slice in the Friday finale. Well, that'll do it another Friday in the books. Of course, tomorrow, already Saturday, July the 6th, 12 races on the program, a couple of stakes as well. First race post about 12.50 Eastern, and I was pretty happy being a racing fan who cut my teeth originally back in the early to mid-90s. We run the Not Surprising Stakes tomorrow afternoon. He was a wonderful Florida-bred sprinter. Saw him run many times in New York and a horse I will never forget. Hope you can join us again, 12.45, 12.50 for that Saturday first race post. Good night, everybody. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Tired. Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.